So um, you want to just alternate back and forth between these, Max? Maybe um, you can do the first one. I'll take the next one. Yeah, sure. That, that works. So significance of atypical cells after treatment of CIS. So atypic, the atypical cells uh, are very common, particularly after BCG. BCG causes um, an inflammatory response in the bladder. Um, by design, it causes a lot of particularly immune cells to enter into the bladder. And so when part of the bladder lining is shed with urine, none of those cells will look normal again. So it's almost expected to see um, atypical cells um, after uh, particularly BCG and many uh, intravesical treatments in the bladder. Yeah, I, I will agree with Max. And I would also go as far as saying, I typically, uh, I don't really sweat um, atypical cells very much. I know it sounds very malignant. Um, and I think patients tend to get you know, very worked up when they find out that they have atypical cells in their urine, but it's very, very unusual for me to find an atypical cell, you know, an atypical cytology that I'm worried about. And it really does depend on the, on the clinical scenario. Um, certainly after BCG, I don't really sweat atypical cells. Um, if I see something that looks abnormal in the bladder um, and, you know, I'm, I'm debating about whether to biopsy it uh, and a, a urine cytology comes back atypical, at that point, I may I may consider doing a biopsy um, depending on the clinical scenario, but I don't I typically don't get too worked up about atypical cells. Um, I'll mention uh, so uh, there's a question um, in the pre uh, uh, pre webinar uh, 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 so, uh, so that was solicited um, pre webinar about squamous cells. Um, squamous cells again may sound very malignant, but they're really just normal cells that are sloughed off. Uh, by the uh, by the urinary uh, by the urinary tract into the urine, and they're detected by the pathologist, uh, the cytopathologist. They're really just very really. They look like large, flat cells with a very small nucleus and a lot of cytoplasm. Um, they're often uh, considered contaminants. So uh, you guys may remember um, uh, if you if you give a urine sample in your doctor's office, they will often give you a little. Uh, a sanitary pad or sanitary napkin to sort of clean off the opening of your urethra. The point of doing that is to try to reduce the number of squamous cells in the urine sample because as I mentioned, they tend to be contaminants. Why not use urine tests for screening? Uh, the reason we would, we would not use a urine test, you know, as like a large screening test uh, for people is quite simply the test is not good enough in that it would lead to over treatment. So what do I mean by that is that, you know, it would, it, it's, it's best utilized when there's a clinical index of suspicion. So when somebody has, um, you know, gross hematuria or something like that, or has had a history of bladder cancer and you're worried about a recurrence. Um, if you were to screen an entire population, um, then, you know, it would lead to a lot of unnecessary procedures. And I'll just kind of leave it at that. Yeah. Uh, site, why isn't cytology routine sort of along the same lines? Um, we don't use it for screening because as Max mentioned, um, a lot of people might have, for instance, atypical cytology. Um, and, and, and because it's very often not really anything that's clinically significant, it might lead to, you know, anesthesia, bladder biopsies, et cetera. Um, we don't use it routinely, even in patients that have known bladder cancers, because cytology is really not very good for patients with low-grade disease, low-grade superficial cancers. Cytology is very good for people with CIS um, and high-grade, for instance, high-grade T1 um, bladder cancers. But if you have a low-grade history of, if you have a history of low-grade TA uh, tumors, which is probably, I don't know, 30, 40, 50% of patients with a history of bladder cancer. Um, cytology, even if, you even if the urologist visualizes a tumor in the bladder with their own eyes, some, often the cytology will be negative. And that's because those low-grade tumors often have normal cytological reports. Uh, anything available for in-home monitoring? So yeah, so I'll, I'll first just say I am a paid consultant for Pacific Edge, which makes CX Bladder, but
but they do have a home monitoring uh, 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 option. So it's a, it's a send out test from home, um, but really that test should be uh, done. Uh, it needs to be ordered by the urologist. Um, there are certain situations in which that, that may make sense. Um, Phil mentioned one area is to help uh, adjudicate or clarify a cytology that's either suspicious or, or in certain situations may be atypical. Um, and, but, but otherwise, there's really no replacement uh, at this point uh, you know, for a cystoscopy. Although obviously, uh, you know, uh, uh, scientists li like Phil um, and like, like many people are really looking for ways to replace uh, cystoscopy. I really don't think that is, I just by, oh my gosh, I just uh, combined both questions. Uh, but anyway, I didn't realize that the last question was going down that road as well. There's really no uh, replacement for cystoscopy. Phil, do you want to uh, follow on from that? Sure. Yeah, I, I agree. There's really there's not a urine test right now, but certainly scientists are working on that. Um, you know, the the problem is although cystoscopy is an uncomfortable test that patients have while they're awake, um, because it's a very quick test and you know usually can be done without any significant complications. It's going to be a really high bar to replace cystoscopy with a urine test. That, that, that's my opinion. Um, it, you know, and then there were several people that asked about whether, you know, test A was better than test B. In other words, is a, is a BTA test better than NMP22 or is Eurovision better than cytology, et cetera. Um, those, those kinds of tests really, th those kinds of questions haven't really been able to be asked in, a, in like a clinical trial because they all are made by different companies and no one really wants to know if their test mat, you know, sizes up with their competitors' test. Um, by and large, you know, cytology is the workhorse of the urine diagnostic um, testing. Um, I don't know, Max, how much do you tend to use these other you know, NMP, B, BTA, Eurovision? Yeah, I mean, the, I don't, yeah, really the only test besides urine cytology I'll use is, is the CX bladder test. And I'll use that you know, in, in specific scenarios. So Phil, should, is that all the questions? Should we go through some of these? Uh, there's one more question about why collecting. So often um, a doctor, a urologist may want an early morning sample. Um, the idea there is that most people don't really drink a lot of water while they're sleeping and they tend to have very concentrated urine. Uh, concentrated urine preserves the cells that are present in the urine um, a little bit better than a more dilute sample would. So uh, uh, I will tell my patients, for instance, if, they're, if, if I know they're coming back for their you know, routine, I don't know, every three month cystoscopy, I'll tell them to try to be a little bit thirsty when they show up so they have a very concentrated urine, which again, will preserve some of those abnormal cells if they're present 